Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm your host, Muhammad Hussain, tuning in from Los Angeles, currently volunteering for Wise Islam Southern California. I would like to welcome you all to the Conference 2020, Islam, the Solution in the Time of Confusion. This will be the final session titled, Even Your Voice Shakes. Please also pay attention to two important links ikna.org slash donation and also baraka the first one is definitely we need your help and support and the second one is you can join us at the receive the baraka from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> and uh now we will have a q a and uh like uh, all the panels and uh, and, uh we go with the uh we receive some questions i think uh from audience and some uh, or actually, um, one of the questions I think from uh, um, Sister Diaz, uh, maybe uh, uh, Latinos accept Islam nowadays, actually, especially after 911 and also from recently, uh, 2009, especially. Uh, one of your statistics was telling that uh, the, there is a rise in the uh, growth in the Latino. So what could be the main cause or reason for that? Is this, uh, uh, they are reminded to their past uh, glory or history in Spain, and they came to know about what's, uh, is this a bad impact or they're really learning Islam and they finding the difference between Catholic uh, uh, faith and the, and on the other hand, there's also added question to that, that the Protestant uh, Christian as compared to Catholic, the Protestants are not many entering into Islam as compared to Catholics. So any other idea about that also? So we know um, statistically that Latino Muslims are growing um, since 2000. Um, in 2019, I have here some statistics. Only 1% of Muslims identified as Hispanic by 2018, that number had reached 7%. Wow. So Muslims identifying as Hispanic or Latino. Uh, and so that's about a 700% increase over 10 years. The reason for that, Alhamdulillah, I think there's, there are reasons. Uh, we are living together in, uh, in communities where there is Latino and Muslim presence. So there's, there's that interconnection happening there in different places and that is uh, in the dawah efforts even if it's indirect dawah right just through example a lot of people are learning about islam and coming coming to islam from that angle on 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 the other hand also if you look i mean in 2000 over 10 years 2000 to 2018 sorry, 2008 to 2018 you see a growth but there's also been a growth in technology there's been a shift in technology. So now we, we live in this uh, globalized uh, internet community where information is so easily accessible. So we have a lot of Hispanics who are also going back to their roots. For example, one example, a lot of, uh, one of the things that is popular now is the ancestry test. You have like ancestry DNA, uh, 23 and me, and people are taking these DNA tests and come to find out, lo and behold, I was in a forum where there was a young man from Puerto Rico who said, I took this ancestry test and he's a non-Muslim. And he said, and for some reason it came back that I'm 90% Arab. How is this possible? I was born in Puerto Rico. My parents were born here. How can this be? And so he came to find out that he has this ancestry he didn't know about. So that's another way. There are so many different things happening now that this information is out there and uh, we just need to continue to expand those efforts as far as the spiritual reasons why latinos are coming into islam we have a lot of similarities in our belief system and a lot of latinos are disenchanted with catholicism because of different reasons uh one of them is the the belief in in the one god but then also the trinity so there's like some contradictions in the belief system. 
Uh, a lot of Latinos like myself, I went from Catholicism to Protestantism, trying to find answers to the questions that I had about theology, and then eventually found my way to Islam. So it was that type of process. Um, I think either, either way, Latinos are finding that there are too many contradictions and there are not enough things being put into practice in the Christian faith, in the Christian church, and that's why they are turning to Islam. And a lot of the best, and that those are just some some small reasons, and there are many, many other reasons as well. Jazakallah uh, One more question, actually, from you. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, Latinos, uh, they ask for the Quran, and uh, they're always confused with the translations uh, in Spanish, you know, and they get confused which one is the best. And some Muslim scholar, they also criticize some of those translations. Which one is you recommend that currently you, you find yourself as a very uh, felt comfortable to? Uh, so there are several translations in Spanish, and I'm going to pull this one out here. Um, the one, I work for YSM, and the one that we have been distributing is the, the newest one, which is in Latin American Spanish, and this is Muhammad Isa Garcia, Isa Garcia's translation, um, El Coran. And um, this is printed in several several places. One of them is Furkan Foundation. I believe they print it. So you can go to their website and you can order through them. You can order through us as well, ysm.org uh, slash bazaar. So you can find it there. Um, Isa Garcia's translation is more in line with the Latin American Spanish. Uh, whereas other translations, for example, the one with the red cover, which is... Uh, Abdul Melara Navio, that one is more Spanish from Spain. So some of the wording is different. Some of the, the usage of the language is different. So I do recommend this one, Isa Garcia translation. Traduccion al Quran. Okay, <coughs> And uh, one question is from Siraj Bahai. Uh, person ask. Yes, you, sir. <clears throat> if you among the ninety nine names of Allah, which names actually you prefer? And uh, if you are given the alignment to like us, Salam, Ar Rahman, you know that's, Rahim, you know that's, how you have put that? You know, listen, you know that's a crazy question, right? So it's, <laughs> yeah. you can't answer all of. Right, but let me say this though. In honor of one of my teachers, 1978, you mentioned I was I went to Umu Qura University in Mecca, and one of my of my teachers, um, Sheikh Hussein Hamid Hassan, rahimallah, he just died uh, about three weeks ago, and he's a real a real alum. And I'm going to say the two two uh, attributes that he used every day. He started his class. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana inna antal alimul al hakim. You are the knowing and the wise. And there are a lot of Muslims and a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge, but few have wisdom. So we have to learn wisdom uh, from Sister uh, Wendy and Yushra really have taught us um, uh, the meaning really of, of, of wisdom. Beyond this knowledge, we want to use wisdom. So listen, I'm not going to be caught out there with this. <laughs> MashaAllah. All, 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 all of the above. Uh, Al Alim and Al Hakim. That's yes. probably I can figure out now. So I think that's you answered the question actually. And uh, brother uh, Yusha, we always love you. Uh, your dawah for you coming here in LA and giving us uh, lectures and resolve all those uh, tough dawah questions and for us. And um, we uh, recently actually. Um, uh, Sometimes uh, people engage in dawah, especially a lot of uh, uh, Christians uh, when we go to dawah booth. They always debate on this uh, Bible versus the Quran or some. Uh, and uh, sometimes the, we talk about the Bible is corrupt or something and sometimes they get uh, offended with that and then they don't communicate with us. What the best approach of, uh, should we bring the scripture in the discussion first or how you initiate? that actually so alhamdulillah uh, this is a good question actually uh, before before that i want to say jazakul khair and sister wendy uh, for her time uh, and her eloquent speech i want to say jazakul khair to imam saraj and i miss you man and it's been far too long since we've come across each other 
We know we know each other since way, 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 way back. The Zakudi right. Trophy days, way, way back. Um, and and uh, Brother Muhammad Hussein, you know, I, I, I lived in L.A. for like a year. Uh, but there was two things that, that drove me out of California. Number one, there's too many people. And number one, it costs too much money. Um, so when it comes to giving da'wah to Christians using the Bible, I don't recommend this for most people. And I've been saying this for a very long time, and I've never really agreed with this. Now, I, I know that, so I don't want to try to be too long-winded, but I know a lot of this started with the, the following of uh, Sheikh Ahmed Didad, rahimahullah um, ta'ala. But you have to understand that Ahmed Didad's intention was never, he never woke up one day and said, you know what, I'm going out into the streets with the Bible, and I'm going to, you know, stump all these Christians. His da'wah was defensive. He was being onslaught by missionaries in South Africa with the Bible. So he had to use what was being used against him. Um, and he became very good at it. But that's not, that's not everybody's situation. Um, I use the Bible uh, frequently because of the simple fact that's how I was born and raised. I understand that book. Because the problem with, with uh, Christian Muslim dialogue, and this is the reason I always suggest born and raised Muslims to stick to, 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 stick to the Quran. We have the perfect word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let that speak for itself and be what it is. But for someone like myself, I not only understand Christianity from a textual perspective, I understand it from a psychological perspective. I know how Christians think, what, what, how they feel about their Bible, how they feel about certain verses. Why? Because I was raised feeling that way about those verses. I was raised thinking like that. So it gives me a bit of an advantage in, in, in that arena, um, uh, as you would. And I spent time studying the Bible before becoming a Muslim as a youth. So I use it because it's something I believe I can, if, if I have a, a deep enough conversation with someone, can get them to some understanding. But for your average born and raised Muslim to try to debate a Christian using the Bible, you're going to lose with anyone who knows the Bible half well you're going to lose because it is a a, a, a a mirage in the desert. Every time you think you've got it, there's another verse that's going to throw it all the way in left field because it contradicts itself left, right, and center. So don't 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 go there. You know, if a Christian comes to you and tries to show you verse of the Bible where the Bible says this, my common response is which Bible? Is you are you are you talking about the King James Bible, the New Reverse Standard Version Bible? You talking about the you know the Catholic Bible, the Bible? Because they're every single one of them is different. As Muslims, we use the Quran because it is the perfect word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and we can trace its origin back to the original manuscripts and the original source, who is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who taught it to us by Allah. Stick with that. What the Christians have is very weak. It is weak. And when you put the Quran against it, the two look immeasurably uh, different. But if you keep trying to argue Bible with Bible, that's not really going to get you very far because you're arguing, you're arguing something bad with something bad. It's just not going to work. Stick with the Quran. It has everything it needs. I read the Quran once as a non-Muslim and I accepted Islam. That's all it took for me. So it has always been for me, the Quran that has been the source of guidance for mankind. Stick with that. Don't go into the Bible realm if that's not what the person wants to discuss. And if they want to bring up a Bible verse, say, hey, look, I don't, I don't know much about the Bible. I don't know much about its history. It has a very, you know, a very colorful history to say the least, but we have the Quran, which is the unadulterated, uncorrupted word of God directly from God's mouth, uh, excuse me, Allah, directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you use that instead of going with the Bible. Sorry that was long-winded, but that's why I didn't put it in da'wah because I see too many people trying to become Bible thumpers and, and it doesn't work. Jazakallah khair for all of you, the beautiful uh, topics and good Q&A. So we will end here, inshallah. And uh, um, um, again, Jazakallah khair.